Hello, today we're going to look at making gradients with watercolour. It's something that has been a bit of a bane of my life and it's one of the steepest learning curves that I've had to go through when learning about watercolour paints. With the right tricks and the right tools, you'll be able to make gradients too and I'm going to take you through a couple of ways that I do it. So let's get started. So I'm going to show you three different ways. First one will be Payne's Grey, very heavy pigment up here through to almost no pigment back here. The second one will be Payne's Grey into red in a wet and wet technique. And then the Payne's Grey into red using one layer first, letting it dry, and then going in with the red from the opposite end. I'm gonna be using a Sable Round Aquafine brush from De La Rowney. This is an eight, size eight, and it just holds quite a lot of water in the barrel and has quite a fine point. We don't need the point for this exercise, but the um, capacity for holding water is very important. So I start by loading pigment at one end of the gradient bar and then I drag it with clear water down to the end. Then what I do is start loading up the paint, so getting much, much darker at one end and then battling it back with clear water from the opposite end. So this is a bit embarrassing because it hasn't worked down here. So I'm gonna give it another go. And I think the reason for this is that I didn't finish it properly with more clear water going in from the bottom end. Here to here is quite nice, but it's the fade out into the white that didn't work. Some of the pigment started to pull in areas of the paper. So let's try that again here. And this time I'm gonna end with more clear water along this bit. Yeah, this one looks a lot better. I've gone in with clear water from this end and graduated a bit better. So let's dry it and see what it looks like when dry. Now we're gonna apply the same process as this single color gradient to a dual color gradient. I'm gonna start exactly the same way I did with this one, all the way to the very end, and then start charging in with red from the opposite end. Right, so this is why I don't like the very wet technique. I prefer the one that I'm gonna show you next, which is letting one of the gradients dry and then painting a gradient over it. This style of gradient is just really hard to control. It takes a lot of practice. You need really good paper for it as well so that it doesn't buckle because otherwise what you're gonna get is ridges like this and you'll get the liquid pooling in the base of the ridges and then you'll get the ring marks of dried watercolor um, up and down your gradients. So experiment with this one because it is satisfying when you get it right I mean, mine's a little bit blocky but I think that would just come down to experience and practicing a bit more the next one is kind of how I do it and it's a little bit of a watercolor hack okay so this next one is the same way as we've been doing it before I'm going to start with the black let it dry though this time and then go in with the red Now that the Payne's grey layer is dry, I'm going to go in with red on the other side. And it doesn't really matter that this is a little bit streaky, 
because going over with the red, it's going to reactivate some of the Payne's Grey layer, which means I'm probably going to have to go in at the end with a little bit more Payne's Grey anyway. But it is a more measured and controlled way of creating a gradient. That took a couple of goes up that way and then one more black go that way and we're done. Pretty smooth gradient, I'd say. Now the last gradient, I'm going to do a 30 degree angle, which is why the camera's tilted up like this. The board, as you can see, is like properly tilted on my desk. And what this will allow is for the water to run down the page, creating a really smooth gradient. Now I prefer to go from water to colour when the board is tilted like this. Some people like to go from colour to water, but you can get pooling of pigment that kind of moves around if you start with colour. So consider which way up you want your board. And I'm going to approach this in a slightly different way. So let's get some water up the top. And start dragging it all the way down the piece of paper. What we want is an even wetness across the piece. So areas that aren't too wet or too dry just really nice and even. And you can do that by going over it one more time with your brush like that. Now, I'm not gonna take Payne's Gray because actually that is made of multiple pigments and will separate. So let's go with the Cadmium Deep Red Hue. I'm gonna work upside down like this from the bottom. So I'm gonna start laying in the pigment and allow my brush to run out of paint as I travel up. Okay, so you can see it's stronger down there and weaker up the top. Then I'm going to come down again with some clear water all the way to the bottom. And there you have it about a 30 degree angle with your board and gravity will help do all the hard work. Now, this is one of my favorite parts, peeling off the masking tape to see the crisp lines around everything. I can see that it's gonna get really messy underneath once I pull off the ends, but oh well, no one's perfect. Oh, this is so satisfying. No, not that one, this one first. Yeah, look at that mess at the bottom. Never mind, eh? The principle's there. So, this didn't turn out too badly, did it? I mean, I messed up there in quite a big way, didn't I? Um, but we fixed it, we learned what went wrong. And actually, as this one dried, this one dried naturally without the hairdryer. You can actually see that the clear water has run into the pigment and pushed a lot of that pigment down. Whereas when I left it, it there was quite a lot of pigment quite high up. So that is one of the more natural ways of making a gradient. Try these out, get experimenting, find your favourite paper and your favourite paints and just go for it. And I've left a list of materials down in the description below. So take a look down there. And I'd love to hear from you. So if you have any ideas of content that you'd like to see from me, please leave a comment down below and I will add it to my list.